This is Dr. Holt. I have a, this is a spring problem. I have a 3.5 kilogram block right here. It's dropped from a rest from a height of 5 meters above the top of the spring, with this being the top. When the block is momentarily at rest, the spring is compressed 25 centimeters. What is the speed of the block when the compression of the spring is 15? So basically, we're going to do, take this block, we're going to drop it, it's going to come down here, it's going to compress the spring a full 25 centimeters, and then it's going to come back where the spring compression is. So it will come back up another 10 centimeters where the compression is going to be 15. All right, so set up that problem. I recommend to go ahead and decide where you want to take your baseline, or I can call it the neutral axis, where you're going to take all your values um, when calculating the potential gravitational potential energy. So I'm going to set it all as this. Then I'm going to define what my positions are. This is going to be position one, and then when the block gets down to here, that'll be position two. And I'm going to go ahead and just clone this so we can see what I'm talking about here. I'll bring it all the way down to here. So this will be position two. All right, so we go right to the conservation mechanical energy because there's no work being done by non-conservative forces because we're not. A we're not considering any drag or anything else by the, by the air or any frictional loss as a result of the spring compressing. So we can go and say the potential energy, gravitation, one, and I always include this when I have springs, potential energy of the spring at one, plus the kinetic energy I have at one, must equal to the potential energy, gravitation at two, plus the potential energy, spring two, plus the kinetic energy at two. All right, now what you want to do is identify what is zero. At position one, I have no spring potential energy. It's gone to zero. I have no kinetic energy because I'm just dropping it and the velocity is going to be zero. When this mass falls all the way down to here, my gravitational potential energy as a result of this being the uh, baseline of the neutral axis, this has also gone to zero. I have come to a stop, so my kinetic energy has gone to zero. So this problem has been simplified fairly substantially. Now to do the gravitational potential, it's going to be the mass of the block, which is going to be the 3.5. So we'll take the 3.5. We will multiply that by 9.8. Now the distance you're going to drop that is going to be 5 plus 0.25 meters, or 25 centimeters. So we we'll make that 5.25. Okay, we go right over here, and now our sp spring potential is going to be one half times k times the full deflection, 25 squared. From this, we will go ahead and solve for k. If you do your math, you should get 5762.4 newtons per meter. So that is going to be your spring constant. All right, now what we're going to do is let's change the color of this so you can kind of see what's taking place here. Let's go to a purple or something like that. This mass now has bounced back up. So it's, it's come all the way down, and now it's going to go back up 10 centimeters. And where the 10 centimeters is, it says what is the speed of block when the compression is 15. So it was originally 25, now it's 15. That means I have moved back up 10 centimeters. Okay, so I work the problem again. We know the spring constant now. And I just basically write, do the same thing here. I'm going to say, what is the potential energy, gravitation, and we'll call this position two. So we're going to go from this being position two to this being, oops, do that with purple, uh, do it in red, with this being position three. So my gravitational potential at 2 plus the spring potential at 2 plus the kinetic energy at 2 must equal to the potential energy gravitation 3 plus the potential energy spring 3 plus the kinetic energy at 3. All right, let's define what 0 is. Again, we're letting this, we're not changing our baseline, so the gravitation here has gone to 0. This thing has come to a stop, so this has gone to zero here. All right, now we have everything we want here. Now, nothing over here has gone to zero. We still have spring potential. We have gravitational potential as a result of this being moved up. 
So we go ahead and we'll write everything down and we will get 0 plus 1 half times our spring constant of 5762.4 times our full compression of 0.25 or 25 centimeters squared plus our kinetic energy which is 0 is equal to our mass 3.5 times 9.8 times 0 0.10 plus the spring potential we are compressed 15 centimeters that's going to be one half times my k value of 5762.4 times 0.15 squared plus one half times 3.5 get that all in there v squared and now all we have to do is solve for V. Alright, I'm going to run that. That one I have not done on the calculator yet, so I'm going to do the left side first. That's going to be 0.5 times 5762.4 times 0.25 squared. So on the left side, we'll just work this in steps, I will get 180.075. And again, that would be in joules, is equal to 3.5 times 9.8 times 0.1 that's going to give me 3.43 joules plus 0.5 times 5762.4 times 0.15 squared that's going to give me 64.827 joules and then over here plus 1 half times 3.5 v squared we will move all this right here over to the other side. So I get 180.075 minus 3.43 minus my 64.827. And that gives me a value of 111.818 joules. Okay, that is equal to 1 half times 3.5 V squared. Okay, I multiply this side by 2 and this side by 2, these will cancel out here and here. Now we divide by 3.5 both sides and that disappeared there and then all I have to do now is take the square root. So I'll go ahead and multiply that by 2 divided by 3.5 second square root, second answer. Gives me a velocity of, of 8 meters per second. Okay. and that is how you get the velocity. Now one of the things often asked on a problem like this is is where the maximum velocity is going to occur. Now what you'd want to do to find out where your maximum velocity is going to occur you want to find out the point where the acceleration is going to be zero. And what I'm going to recommend that if you want to find that point is is just to define, go ahead and just do a free body diagram of this you would have this being 3.5 times 9.8 this force would be the spring pushing back up on this and you would just set that equal to your kx which would be 5762.4 times x okay so I will take 3.5 times 9.8 I would divide it by the 5762.4. That's going to give me a very small deflection and then you'll find out that x value here is going to be 0 0.00595 meters. Okay, that means when you are compressed this value here you will get your maximum velocity because your, your net force here has gone to zero which means your acceleration has gone to zero which means you have reached your maximum velocity. So if you want to find the maximum velocity that's all you have to do is be run this again where your deflection of the spring is only 0 0.00595 meters and then there you would get the maximum velocity. Alright, I hope this video was useful. I uh, wish you the best of luck.